In this tutorial, we will learn how to create a simple Spark SQL project in Scala. Before you go through this tutorial, make sure that you have the development setup ready and that you can create a simple Scala project as described in two previous tutorials. First, we will create a simple Scala project using Maven command line tool. We will call it Spark SQL. Once the project is created, we will import it into IntelliJ. The first step to use Spark SQL is to add a dependency to the project. You don't have to remember it, just search for Spark SQL Maven and it will probably be the first result. Choose the latest version and copy the Maven dependency to your POM file. To apply the changes, right click the POM file and choose Maven Reload Project. To start using Spark SQL in your code, you need to create a Spark session as shown in this code snippet. Now you are ready to use Spark SQL. Copy this other code snippet to open a tab separated file with a header line. To make sure that the file is loaded correctly, we add a show command which prints the first 20 lines. Download the provided sample file to test your code. Now you can run your program by clicking the green arrow and you will see the output shown on screen. You might need to scroll up a little bit to see the output since Spark SQL is quite chatty on the logs. In this example, we let Spark infer the schema of the input. We can use the print schema function, which prints the schema that Spark SQL inferred as shown. Run the program again, and you will see the names and types of the attributes as Spark SQL inferred from the input file. Now let's run a query on this data. In this example, we have a time range and we want to filter the log entries in this time range, group them by response code, and count the number of lines in each group. We will run this query using two methods. In the first method, we will programmatically apply one relational operator at a time. For this specific query, we apply a filter operation for the time range, then we group by response code, and finally count. At the end, we print out the final answer and run the program to check the results. In the second method, we directly write a complete SQL query that performs all the operations above. To do that, we first need to create a view and give it a name so that we can use that name in the, in the SQL query. After that, we can directly type in our SQL query and print out the query answer. As expected, we will get the same answer as before. That's it for this tutorial. The next step is to go through the Spark SQL documentation for more examples.